Manchester City are champions of England for the fourth consecutive season. A record-breaking campaign. These City players will sprint off down the tunnel with a celebration. The fans flood onto the field at the Etihad. City have bested West Ham United. Phil Foden with some key... Yeah, the blue moon has risen over the English Premier League once more. And now Pep Guardiola's Manchester City will not only be called champions, but also history makers. Four consecutive Premier League titles have cemented the citizens in the halls of EPL lore. Try as they did, Arsenal couldn't deny City. Mikel Arteta's side rallied for a 2-1 win against Everton, but needed West Ham to pull off a shocker if they were to lift their first EPL trophy in 20 years. It wasn't to be, City were just too good, too clinical. As Phil Foden, two goals, calmed early nerves before Rodri clinched the deal after Mohamed Kudis had given both West Ham and, more importantly, Arsenal some hope with a 42nd minute goal. But they say it's the hope that kills. And so Arsenal are left to lick their wounds for a second consecutive season while City and Pep celebrate a sixth title in the last seven years. In terms of numbers and in terms of numbers, nobody had been better than us. So the records, the goals and, and points and, and four in a row. I said before in our your colleagues, so if I land here tomorrow and I say, okay, the next seven years you will win six Premier Leagues. I said, are you crazy? So I cannot figure out. It's impossible. So we have done something unbelievable, six Premier Leagues in seven years. So it's in this country, in the modern football, with the quality of the managers, the teams and everything, it's always so the team surprised me, the organization surprised me, it's an incredible club. Yeah, pretty special. Let's now hear from the Arsenal boss who feels his side is on the right path. I was there when we did 100 points. So I know what it takes. <laughs> I know what happened. And this is the level. Uh, nobody has to explain me what the level is because I've been there for years, every day. Uh, so I know what we have to do if we want to reach there. And not only for one season, but for the rest. But we are in the right path, in the right journey uh, to see the evolution so quickly happening. I haven't seen it um, before, so we're in the right trajectory now. We need really to put the teeth and bite into it because we really want more. Yeah, Mikel Arteta, the Arsenal boss. Let's now get our European football correspondent Simon Evans in on the discussion. But before we do that, let's have a look at how things finished. Manchester City toppling the table, two points ahead of Arsenal. Liverpool in third, Aston Villa qualifying for the Champions League. Tottenham Hotspur in fourth and Chelsea doing brilliantly to finish in sixth position. All right, yeah, let's have a chat now with Simon Evans. Simon, it's Manchester City again. No surprise um, to us who have watched them. And even when they were behind uh, Arsenal, before even the Aston Villa defeat, there was always that feeling that it would be Manchester City again. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we talked about it on this show many times and, and we talk about the different permutations and possibilities and could Liverpool make a push? Have Arsenal got what it takes? But at the end, we always seem to come back to the conclusion that when it comes down to those last eight games of the season, City just have that ability to win, win, win and win out the season. Real closers, finishers, you know, like, like, the, like the golfers or the cricketers in T20 chasing down the total. They know what they have to do to get it done. And they've done it four times straight now, which is which is pretty incredible. Yeah, what makes the difference? Because so I can understand it in, in track and field, for example, where athletes peak for a particular event, there's a certain science that is associated with that. And even in other individual sports, but I'm trying to understand it in a football context that consistently a team can peak at a particular point of the season where they just don't lose. And that's what we've seen from Manchester City so often um, in the English Premier League when it comes down to the nitty-gritty, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, the only thing you can say is that 
probably there's some work done on the fitness side to ensure that they, they physically are in, in the best shape at the end of the season because there's a lot of teams aren't, a lot of teams tire towards the end. Traditionally, then that's always been the way that you peak in the sort of middle of the season, really. Um, so I think they do a lot of work on that, but I think most of it's mental. I really do think that when it gets to those games at the crunch, City just believe that they will find a way to win those games because they dominate possession. They know that if they're good enough and they're patient enough, they've got the strikers and the and the creative players to make the opportunities. They will get chances to win the game and they will take them. And I think they just have that level of belief that they sort of lock in to that in the last couple of months of the season. Um, you know, I've seen it myself there, sat at the stadium, and you can see the, the total focus they have and total belief in, in what they do. And uh, I'm not saying that Arsenal don't have focus, that would be extremely unfair. But until you've been there and done it, and done it several times like this, I think it's difficult to have that. The only other team I can think of that, that had that ability, really, uh, in, in recent times, would have been Ferguson's Manchester United. And then if you go back in English football uh, before that, you would have to go back to some of the great Liverpool teams of the 70s and 80s. But uh, City definitely have it. And, uh, you know, I think English football needs more than just Arsenal to be the contender. But thankfully, we had Arsenal this year and it was uh, better than not having anyone chasing City. Yeah, and you know, Simon, for me, I always say, it's, you are hungry to win something, especially when you have not won it before. But what I want to give a lot of credit to the team and, of course, the manager for is being able to stay hungry I mean, season after season, because I think it can, of course, become a bit monotonous if you're trying to do the same thing over and over. And I think a lot of credit goes to, of course, coach Pep Guardiola, Pep Guardiola who was able to keep them hungry. Because, as I said, you know, you sometimes as people, we look for other challenges. But, you know, City was able to stay the course. And, of course, when it depended on them to get the results, able to get it. Yeah, I think so. And I think what, what Guardiola has been able to do there, and I've heard people talk about this with other successful teams, is create such a strong uh, culture within the dressing room uh, amongst the players that they almost run it themselves. They almost, I'm not saying they don't need Guardiola, of course they do, he oversees the whole thing. But in terms of things like discipline, uh, you know, good timekeeping, focus, behaviour, being good teammates, all those things, that takes care of itself at Manchester City. Guardiola doesn't need to worry about those things because Kyle Walker's going to impose it, Rodri's going to impose it, De Bruyne is going to impose it. They've got so many leaders in that team as well. That's an area where I think, you know, Arsenal can grow yet, is, is having those players who can, who can turn around in the locker room. And if there's the slightest sign of disunity, crush it straight away. And I think, I think City have that, they, they, they integrate two or three players a year. They never have these massive big changeovers like we've seen at other clubs. And uh, I'm sure that will be the same this summer. They just keep it fresh. But those new players who come in, they have to buy into what is already there at Manchester City. So there's no disruption. There's no bad eggs at, at, at uh, Manchester City. You never hear of anybody, you know, being unhappy with Guardiola and staying around at the club very long. Anyone who goes out of line, we saw that with João Cancelo, who was an excellent footballer, but who uh, who got on the wrong side of Guardiola with his, some of his behaviour and uh, was straight out of the club. Um, so that's that's the kind of team it is. It's very, very tight-knit. Right, and Simon, I think you make such a great point, of course, with all those examples, because it's one thing, and I think Manchester City fans, they deal with this a lot, right? Everybody talks about the amount of money that the club has, but nobody talks about how Pep Guardiola is so strategic in how he uses the money. And I think you just outlined that. You spoke about getting the right pieces, in other words, you know, um, no bad eggs to quote you. So it's as if, you know, Pep studies what he has to work with and he doesn't go about like a lot of the other teams just spending money bringing random pieces that don't actually fit. For me, as a Manchester City fan, the only person I could think about that I would say as of recent, that that was done and I felt as if we didn't get enough out of him would have been Jack Grealish. But also, there were games where he came um, he came to the forefront and he impacted the game as well. Well, Grealish is a really good example because he was absolutely the star of Aston Villa. Right. He was pretty much a star with the England team as well. And at Manchester City, he had to come in, in and be one of the squad. Right. One of the squad. And, and deliver when he was asked to, but sometimes he'd be on the bench 
you know, n never a guaranteed starter at Manchester City, but a player who could bring bring quality when he needed, whether he's starting or coming off the bench. And he's done that, you know, yeah. and he's a player with quite a strong personality. You would say almost seems like an individualist kind of guy rather than a collective guy. But he's bought into it. We haven't heard Jack Grealish complaining about not being in the team. Yeah. When Phil Foden was young and the whole country and half the world was saying, why isn't he starting him when he was 19 or 20 and he looked so, so good? Why isn't he starting him? Why isn't he starting him? He made his debut at 17, I think it was. Uh, and Guardiola was like, he'll get his time, he'll get his time. We never heard one word from Foden or from his agent or anyone else saying, oh, he's not happy being around the team, uh, not being in the side and so on. Everyone yeah. buys into it or they get out. So yeah. you're right. And the, the recruitment has been smart because they've got a really good team of people analysing all the data, scouting and everything else. They have all that. But you have to say as well, the money is a massive factor. You know, that's how they're able to get the best players. That's how they've got the best manager in the first place. You know, it's, it's a huge factor. Yeah, and Phil Foden, of course, you know, really stepping up and his confidence has grown so much he has come through the manchester city uh, system and i think you know he really really has been shining at the age of 24 years but before i pass over to ricardo i just want to touch on arsenal because personally i have to say arsenal has had a really good season the numbers speak for themselves you know losing that one game um unfortunate for them and it has been unfortunate the fact that the team has continued to improve simon just not getting across the line. And I think, you know, now they will be considering, and this is my question to you, do you think Mikel Arteta is the man to take Arsenal across the line? And I know he has done a lot. The, the Arsenal fans love him. But will he be the man to push the club over the line? Yeah, I think he will. And I think they have to stick with him. I think, uh, you know, we, we talked about this on this show a few years ago when there was yeah. talk of them firing him when Arsenal was struggling. And I think I said at the time that you don't sign a coach like uh, Arteta to come in and manage a team unless it's a long-term project. And if you look at what he's achieved since that time, maybe three years ago, I think, when there was a lot of talk that they were going to maybe get rid of him, people like Piers Morgan saying, time to go and all this kind of thing. And, and we see a progression and a progression every year. They have to stick with it, absolutely. And I do think, uh, you know, it was interesting in that interview you ran of him, the clip earlier, where he's saying, look, I was at Manchester City. I know what it takes. And that mentality piece that I was talking about, about that relentlessness, that focusness, a focus and, and togetherness, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that, that is something that Arteta has been able to bring into Arsenal from Manchester City. So, you know, I think, I think they absolutely stick with it. Stick with it. Add, give him some better players. One or two uh, additions this summer. Don't go changing everything. Just some smart additions and they'll be pushing very hard again next year. I think Arsenal have been excellent this year and deserve massive credit. In, in, in eight out of ten seasons, they will be champions of England. Yeah, very much the case. Well, Simon, it was also a very emotional day for Liverpool fans and by extension, the Premier League as Jurgen Klopp yeah, he managed his final game as Liverpool boss with a 2-0 win against Wolverhampton Wanderers. Klopp received a standing ovation of Anfield from players, fans and members of staff. I don't think I will. But if <laughs> I miss you, I just look at the picture, see Winnie and it's gone. That's really... I love you all. I love, I love all. Um, and everything about the club, um, but it's time for me to go. And and, and but uh, look, it's not it's not burning behind me. So that that gives me a good feeling. So we we are not. That's not that you think. Oh, come on, get out of here. So I know I can come back, and I will come back. And how I said after the game from today, three hours ago when the game finished. By the way, um, on I'm I'm a Liverpool supporter, and I, I love that. I can come back and I will come back. Interesting. Well, his biggest rival, Pep Guardiola, was on the verge of tears when addressing Klopp's departure. Mm. I'm a lot. So. Jürgen has Jürgen have been a, a real and very important in my life. He brings me another level as a manager. Uh, I think we respect each other incredibly. Yeah. 
Of course, you must have had some great battles. You know, Simon, I'm going to miss Jurgen Klopp as we look at the titles he's won at Liverpool, the Champions League 2018, 2019, won the Super Cup in 2019, the FIFA Club World Cup, massive year that 2019, the Premier League in 1920, Carabao Cup, they won that twice, the FA Cup, they won in 2022 and the Community Shield in 2022. He pretty much won everything at Liverpool. And when you consider when he came to Liverpool, where um, the club was, they were struggling. They needed a saviour and Jurgen Klopp was exactly that. But um, I'm going to miss Jurgen Klopp. I'm especially going to miss his press conferences. I'm going to miss his antics on the sidelines. I think he brought something different, something special. He's not called a special one, but my goodness me, what he brought to the English Premier League and to Liverpool was special. I'm going to miss him, and I'm pretty sure for you it's the same. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I remember his first press conference and he called himself the normal one yeah. when they were trying <laughs> to get him to say if he was the next special one. And, uh, and he hasn't, he's been anything but normal. I mean, he is a larger-than-life character. Um, he can he can lose his temper with journalists, and he can be tetchy and uh, and, and so on, and especially with the TV. And he, he complains a lot. Uh, but you know, the Premier League is a circus in a lot of ways, isn't it? <laughs> the, the managers are a central part of that circus, and the stories that go around, and the press conferences, and the reactions, and the interviews, and so on. It's what one of the things that really makes the Premier League different from a lot of other sports leagues. You don't see it, for example in the big American sports where, you know, an NBA coach comes out after a game and, and gives an incredible press conference that everyone's talking about for days. It doesn't happen. And Klopp's been part of that whole process. And he'll be he'll be certainly remembered as one of the great Premier League managers. Um, for Liverpool, he was just perfect for Liverpool. He understood that club. I think uh, consciously went out of his way to sort of emulate some of the great Liverpool managers of the past, particularly Bill Shankly, by building this real us against the world mentality which liverpool as a city already has pretty strongly in its dna and and, and working with the fans all the time end of the game some of those great nights uh where i was sat there watching them when they beat barcelona in the champions league that was an incredible night and and seeing him running over to the cop and doing the fist pumps and the whole place going crazy it was like being at some sort of euphoric sort of rock concert or something it, it, it's it's been incredible with him but i do think you know I, I was watching a video of him this morning while i was having a little bit of nostalgia about this myself and and i was watching his first press conference again and man he looked a lot younger and it was only <laughs> what seven years ago yeah he looked a lot younger it takes it out of these people it's non-stop from them all day, every day. Go and, go and look at a picture of what Solskjaer was like before he became United manager. It, ha it happens to them all. So I think he's making the right decision to go and have a rest. And yeah, will he be back? I mean, if, he, if the next manager at Liverpool struggles, you can guarantee that people will be wanting him back. Yeah, yeah that is for sure. I tell you what, um, Simon, I wish that he had come to Manchester United. But... That's a discussion for another day. Simon Evans, it's been a pleasure as usual speaking with you. All right, all the best. All right, take care. Simon Evans, yeah? Let's take a break on the Sportsman Zone. We'll be back with more.